My project is simulating telosome, temozolomide chemotherapy resistance in glioblastoma cells. So why is this project important? Why do, I want to, why do we want to study glioblastoma? So glioblastoma multiform is the most common form of brain cancer. Glioblastoma, in recent years, it's been affecting a younger demographic at a very alarming rate. Also, TMZ is the only first-line therapy available for glioblastoma multiform. And lastly, TMZ is only effective in the first round of chemotherapy. This is one of the worst problems you could possibly have. Uh, TMZ is uh, the chemotherapy drug for uh, glioblastoma. And why is it only effective in the first round? Um, I will explain that later. Great. Okay, so this is just um, a graph showing the diagnosis between the age ranges of 18 and 93. You'll see that... Are you trying to make the point that this is, that this is a dangerous thing? Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Um, so the total group surveyed was 587, and since then 400 of them have died. So that's a very high percentage. And the estimated survival rate of glioblastoma is less than two years from diagnosis. So project specifics. My goal is to understand the difference between the mutated and normal pathways in the glioblastoma cells. I want to learn how the interaction between the two different pathways work, the mutated and the non-mutated. And lastly, how the interactions occur to explain the resistance in the mutated EGF receptor. Uh, EGF is the epidermal growth factor. And so are you trying to understand the entire pathway? Um, basically, the difference, mainly the difference between the, uh, the EGF receptor uh, the mutated EGF receptor and the regular EGF receptor, and how that affects the resistance of TMZ. Anish, can you clarify, so in your third bullet point, how interactions occur to explain the resistance in mutated EGFR. So, is the normal EGFR on the cell surface of glioblastoma being replaced by this EGFR? Yes. And this EGFR <coughs> is insensitive to TMZ? Um, I'm going to explain it in okay. a little more depth on my next slide. So my timeline for this project, I'm, a, I, uh, I'm believing it's going to take over a year. Um, I will, I'm hoping to have one, maybe two uh, IRT members <coughs> on the project working with me. I will be using molecular modeling to simulate the two pathways. And uh, I will do testing at Rutgers with the human cell lines because I'll talk to you about this then. We're not allowed to use human cells here. So my hypothesis, um, I'm studying TMZ resistance and glioblastoma occurs through two distinct pathways, mutated and non-mutated EGF receptors, like I mentioned on the last slide. And so I'll use molecular modeling with the known pathways to simulate how different molecules lead to the induction of the P glycoprotein, which is translated, okay, so, the epidermal growth factor transcribes a multiple drug resistance gene, which then translates for the P glycoprotein. P glycoprotein is a xenobiotic ATP dependent efflux pump. So when TMZ will try and enter the cell for the second round of chemotherapy, the P glycoprotein will pump it back out. This is why it's only effective in the first round. Can you repeat that, please? Starting with EGFR. Uh, so EGFR causes Transcribe. transcri tri transcribes the NDR1, a multiple drug resistance gene. This yep. is a transcription of it. And um, NDR1 is translated with and makes the P glycoprotein. The P glycoprotein is a uh, xenobiotic efflux bump, and this is why um, TMZ is only effective in the first round of chemotherapy. When TMZ attempts to enter the cell for the second round of chemotherapy treatment, the, um, the PGP pump will pump it back out. Make it worse. That's interesting. But is that, does this happen um, specifically only in glial cells, or is it that this, if there's some reason you can't use other treatments in these cells? Um, I, I only did research on TMZ, um, and I'll be testing the pathway 
with the human cell lines and primary cell lines at what period? So the two pathways. So TMT com uh, competitively binds with uh, P-glycoprotein at a calcium A receptor on the cell membrane, and this and this co contributes to chemoresistance in glioblastoma cells. So the two pathways I'll be studying is a uh, regular pathway, which is TMZ-induced resistance. It uh, occurs in 60% of glioblastoma patients. The other one is a mutated pathway. The remaining 40% of glioblastoma patients have a mutated EGF receptor, which creates a natural resistance to TMZ, all right? So the normal pathway, TMZ will competitively bind with PGP at the calcium AM receptor on the cell membrane. Once TMZ has entered the cell, for some reason, um, the expression of a microRNA9 is increased. The microRNA9 will now bind to the untranslated three prime region of the patch receptor, right here, just a little diagram. <coughs> and the patch receptor <coughs> inhibits the sonic hedgehog pathway, but because the uh, micro uh, messenger RNA of the patch receptor has been downregulated so much the patch receptor uh, does not keep being made, is not made as much. This frees up the sonic hedgehog pathway, pathway and that signals glee. Um, a, um, a transcription factor for EGF, which will then create the, which will transcribe, lead to the transcription of MDR1 and the translation of the P glycoprotein. So that's the normal pathway. The mutated pathway is much less complicated. For some reason, even if the sonic hedgehog pathway has been inhibited, EGF will lead to the transcription of the multi-drug resistance gene and the translation of the PGP. This means even before the chemotherapy has begun, TMZ is, it, the cell has TMZ resistance. So what I'm, another thing I'm trying to figure out is how these two very different pathways lead to the same result and why, why the EGF receptor can continue to, or can be transcribed without the signaling of the bleed transcription factor. Anish, that was a very complicated pathway and kudos to you on and having it down, um, honestly. Uh, but that, that's a big pathway. How, what are you looking at specifically within that pathway? So a hedgehog signaling pathway is like super complex in and of yeah. itself, right? Yeah. And then I'm still, it, you're, you said it, you were on clear, or it isn't known how the two path, the hedgehog pathway and then the one that's activated by TMZ connect to each other? But no. It's thought that they do? How, they don't connect to each other. No. I want to understand how the mutated EGF uh, gene can be transcribed without the activation of the sonic hedgehog pathway. And how are you doing that? I'll be using molecular modeling to understand the interactions between the different molecules or, and the different shape of the mutated EGF gene. But what, what exactly does that mean? So, so you're going to be, so this is all going to be computer based? Or you're Mostly. Actually, so, so where are you getting your data? What what is your data? So okay, you're going to be using computers to um, stimulate the the binding or to 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 propose the binding between a couple of things. Where is that data coming from? Um, four or five papers I've read based on doctor I work with the other time. I think I'm confused about what you're. I am also confused about what the experiment is. You presented us with a really interesting problem, but I don't know what you're doing. Yeah, what's the all computational, or are you going to do some experiment? Um, computational in the sense, uh, I will be doing a lot of computational um, based, uh, the project is highly computational based, but there will be um, an application of this, I'm just not allowed to do that here. Okay, so what you're allowed to do here is something with molecular modeling. I, yeah. Can you explain that, what that is? It's basically, um, I do believe it is 
So um, I'm basically going to use molecular modeling with the known pathways or the steps in the pathways that we understand, the sonic hedgehog pathway and the TMZ. Um, what does well, molecular modeling mean to you? Nobody really knows that. what molecular modeling is. I mean, I know a lot about molecular modeling, but I don't okay, have any know. idea I what... A lot of us don't. What are you actually doing? I think, you know what, Anisha, a way of thinking about this may be, like, when you come here and you're doing this, what is the thing that you are taking, mm -hmm. and what exactly are you doing with it? So, specifically, what are you using, and what are you doing with that? So, I'm using the information I've gathered about the... What is this information? What kind of information is it? Is it numbers? Is it structural information? Structural information. The crystal, about the crystallized structure of the... the crystal structure. Yeah, of the EGF receptor. Okay. What are you modeling? Well, I'm going to use the molecular models of this crystallized structure to understand further what call it, how... What are you going to look for? The, um, the different uh, domains and binding sites uh -huh. on the, e the mutated EGF re gene and receptors and the normal EGF genes and receptors. Is there a structure of both? Yes. Is this on the computer or are you actually doing the experiment? Both. Okay, so there's but there's a, so it sounds to me if there's a structure of both the mutant and the wild type protein, then they've already analyzed this. They have not. Um, in 2008, there were more crystallized structures for EGFR than any other receptor. So it likes to crystallize. That's good to know. Okay, so wh what what are you going to use to analyze this structure? Like, what program are you going to use? Um, yeah. uh, there's a ZDoc protein docking server, which uh, I've been using, and these are some softwares that I am semi-familiar with about for the modeling of this these structures. Okay, so if the, okay. if the structure of EGFR isn't new, and the structure of mutant EGFR isn't new, these programs are shareware, they're like openware, open source programs, yeah. so like you can, so, does anybody so, understand what right, I could so use? My understanding of docking servers and software is that you would have you're looking for predicted binding regions on a structure, a known structure for some small molecule, which I guess is the MD. So they don't know where this binds? No, they don't understand where, it, they don't know where it binds or how it causes the expression. Okay, so they have a crystal structure of the receptor and they have a drug they know binds the receptor, but they have not yet crystallized them together. Yeah. And so this would be molecular modeling to identify the location, the binding location. Yeah. Okay. I mean, has that really not that's not been done? No. That that would be I, potentially interesting if it was done before. Yeah, there's many. I mean, we don't we're not we're not stuck with these programs either. Right. right. No. Yeah. I, I I personally haven't ever done this, but I Which definitely is, have seen it done. Right. Um, very computationally expensive, right? In terms of, it's usually required. If, it, if, if there are servers that are freely available, or maybe it works. I mean, through the through Rutgers. Lab. So you've used this program before? Yeah, a couple times. And we so have access to the DE Shaw people too. Yeah. Do you have collaborators? Yes. And. Anish, I think one thing I think we all uh, would like is if you could send us the. We'll, you know what? We'll probably put together some questions for you that we want answered. But I can I can almost guarantee right off the bat that what we want to know is uh, the structure, the paper that described the crystallized structure for EGFR, well at least the mutant EGFR, um, and a paper that precedes this in which your lab used this ZDoc, MZDoc, and mm -hmm. these programs, and what they did with it. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. um, 
you know what, I think at the end of the day, it took us a little while to get there, but the, um, you might have some, I'd, I'd like to see a little bit more protocol, like, we're gonna, this is what I plan to do, and here are the steps. Because I think you presented us with a really good big picture here, Yeah. but I don't feel like I, I confidently know what your experiment is. So, why don't, what we'll do, um, and just to get you started, is first, can you get us those three papers? So, crystallized structure of the mutant and regular EGFR, and what this software and your lab is capable of doing with crystallized structures. Um, and then I want you to double check and make sure that the TMZ EGFR mutant react or the TFG yeah T no TMZ and wild type EGFR no, no TMZ, TMZ binding to, to the yeah. yeah is P is TMZ binding to PGP as well it can, uh, no okay no. okay PGP pumps it yeah that was the So EGF, yeah. you, you know EGF what you know what else would help us is a well documented description of the pathway yeah. that you've described. Right. Um, you know, you, yeah. you showed a little yeah. bit of it with the sonic hedgehog, but, but the I, whole I, thing I, together, kind of keeping right. it in our heads is good. I'm still not quite sure where Sonic Hedgehog fits into us, but that's a separate issue that we don't have to deal with right now. Um, just what he can do. And then, so then, just big picture at the end of the day, the glial cells that you would work with potentially at Rutgers, your plan would be to what? Make mutations in the receptor? Or, or what would you actually be doing with the cells? With the cells? So, um, I would test the pathway, uh, the entire... That's a very pathway, broad statement, uh, testing the pathway. Um, so, test the, uh, the pathway in a mutated glioblastoma cell with a mutated EGF receptor and the normal glioblastoma cell. But what do you mean by test the pathway? Or administer the drug. What are you going to look at? What are you measuring? What are you? What are you measuring? Yeah, what's being measured? Um, it's not exactly what's being measured. It's what I'm looking. Uh, what I'm finding. How how the EG, the mutated EGF receptor is able to create resistance to TMZ without the signaling from TMZ and solely through the creation of the PGF. Right, but what are you going to look at to figure that out? Like, what's the actual experiment? I'll be using uh, the human cells to yeah. basically... So, okay, so EGFR mm -hmm. does something to something else. What is that something else that you are looking at? It's pathway, right? Yeah. So this is EGFR is it's the receptor. Mm -hmm. It binding to the receptor activates the receptor, and something else happens inside the cell. What are those something? Is like that, so there has to be something for you to look actually. We look don't at. understand that yet. Right. So don't know the pathway. You just presented on pathways. That was the normal pathway, not the mutated one. Right, but so would you be looking for presence of the pump? Like, would you be looking at what would you be actually doing to the cells? Right? What would you be the doing with the cells? Pump? You're confused by what we're asking. Is there is there anything that you can tell us that that can you help us to explain your can you explain your confusion about what we're asking? Do you not? Do you get what we're asking? When you're doing your lab work, like, what are you going to be measuring? Is what they're asking, like yeah. protein concentration or something yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, well, I mean, aside from this whole glial cell situation, I think the modeling part of this, in and of itself, has some merit and has could is doable if it has not been done before. So I think focusing on that is, which and that may not be trivial, right? So focusing on that to start with might be a good place to go. Um, how confident are you with the software? Do you know how to use it well? Um, fairly well. Would you be able to teach other students how to use it? Give me a couple of time. Sure. Um, do you have access to people who know how to use it well? Yes. Do you have frequent access to know people who know how to use it well? Yes. And so could you meet with them potentially once or twice a week? 
Maybe once a week. That's a lot. Of That's a lot. But to train someone to use software. But asking anybody, any researcher, for that kind of a time commitment. That's why I'm asking. Because I can't run this one. No. Well, it depends on, it depends on how proficient he is right now. Yeah. Right. So if, if he, you know, I mean, he knows I'm not suggesting that, I, I'm just trying to get an idea for what kind of access you have to people that really know this stuff. So I, I mean, I think we've got as much as we've I got what I need. At this point. Yep. Um, we need a few more things from you and a little more development. Do you want to write down what we asked? There are some papers here.